Recently, there have been quite a few movies dealing with the horror of Hollywood and the pursuit and price of fame. More so than ever, many want to see their name up in lights and will do anything to accomplish that goal. So, of course, this is a wonderful subject to twist and turn and view through a horrifying lens, which is what we're going to talk about in today's picks for the Best in Horror Countdown 2023 to 2024. <laughs> While I loved Ty West and Mia Goth's first two films in this trilogy, Maxine puts the final nail in the coffin of the series, and it does it relatively well. Not as good as the first two films, but still it's pretty good. It's enough to show up at this level in my Best in Horror countdown. Number 17 is Maxine. It was released on July 5th, 2024, and is available on demand, digital download, and Blu-ray from A24. It's written and directed by Ty West. In the third and possibly final film in Ty West's X Saga, we catch up with Maxine Miller, aka Mia Goth, in 1985 Hollywood. Maxine now goes by the name of Maxine Minx and is currently a porn star and stripper with high hopes to break into mainstream acting. But just when she gets her break and is cast in a horror movie by up-and-coming director Elizabeth Bender, played by Elizabeth Debicki, she finds herself stalked by a sleazy detective named John Labatt, played by Kevin Bacon, who seems to know about her dark past. Meanwhile, a series of murders are committed by a person in black brutally murdering sex workers, all of them happening to be within Maxine's orbit, with a pair of cops played by Bobby Cannaval and Michelle Monaghan, Labatt, and the mysterious black-gloved killer zeroing in on Maxine, how is it possible that she'll ever be able to find the time to become the star she dreams of becoming? It's tough saying goodbye, if indeed that's what Maxine is for the X series. I'm sure there's room for more, but I doubt either Mia Goth or Ty West are going to push their luck. Anytime a series comes to an end and the plot has to be wrapped up, Sometimes, it just isn't as satisfying as the road there. I didn't hate Maxine, in fact I liked it quite a bit, but I do feel it's the weakest of the trilogy in terms of story. And it's all because, in order to wrap up a story, sometimes you have to go back to where you began, and because of that, I felt Maxine was rather predictable in the story department. The movie hinges on a masked killer whose identity isn't revealed until the climax, but because there really wasn't anyone left in Maxine's wake throughout X and now Maxine, the identity of the killer was pretty evident from the get-go. It makes me wonder if I would have felt this wave of disappointment had Ty West simply let the cat out of the bag from the beginning and not hinged the plot so heavily on the identity of the masked killer. Would the story have been more satisfying? I think it might have been. And therefore I think this plot point is Maxine's biggest flaw making it pale in comparison to X, which relied on the plot twists in the middle, and Pearl, which simply riveted you to your chair because of Mia Goth's amazing performance. All of that said, I had a good time with Maxine. If anything, it shows that Ty West is the real deal in terms of filmmaking. The range he exhibited over these three films, making a meta slasher, a period piece, Descent into Madness, and now a neo-noir retro mystery thriller, makes me believe this guy can really do anything if he puts his mind to it. Having followed West's work since the beginning of the exceptionally scary House of the Devil, West has evolved into a big-time filmmaker, while others of his ilk have accepted big-budget flicks like Godzilla movies and such, and failed to make this transition. West seemed to do it at his own pace and in its own way. Simply seeing West emulate such films as Hardcore, Cruising, and other seedy, sultry sleaze fests from the 70s that make you want to take a shower after watching is impressive as all get out. On top of that, he tosses in a black-gloved killer and elaborate death scenes ripped straight from the great Italian jallies of old. West even seems to film this movie on aged and weathered film stock to make it feel like a movie one might have found in the horror section at the local video store you used to frequent way back when. 
Add on top of that homages to films like Beyond the Green Door, Avenging Angel, and other sexploitative horror films of the 70s and 80s, and you understand that West has done his homework, understands it, and is able to convey that look and feel on the screen with ease most directors only dream of. Hell, he even pays homage to Psycho in a way that isn't hammy or hacky. There are numerous scenes early on that took my breath away, but one in particular that takes place in a video store sealed the deal that West is a filmmaker I will follow to the grave and beyond. It's choppily edited between Maxine reading her script and someone being murdered elsewhere. It's done so good that I wanted to rewind it and watch it over and over again to see how it was put together. And believe me, once I get the Blu-ray, I'll be doing so. Other scenes soak in the seedy underbelly of Hollywood so well that you can almost smell the tipped over trash cans. Moving on to the acting, Mia Goth is going to be the reason most of you are going to be seeing Maxine, and while I feel the character she plays is a bit less dimensional as her performances were in X and especially Pearl, she still maintains the spunky, crass, and downright ballsy attitude she had at the end of X. She's given a moment to flex her acting muscles in an audition early on, and delivers a fascinating audition, giving the audience a peek at the trauma she hides behind a ton of hairspray and a lot of makeup. Still, this distanced, tough gal performance is part of Maxine's character. Full snouted with coke, Goth plays someone who would do anything not to be alone with her thoughts. This is evidenced by another phenomenal character-centric scene where Maxine has to have her head cast in plaster and has nowhere to go and nothing to snort to hide from her past traumas. The rest of the cast is solid, but with the bigger budget comes familiar actors that sort of distracted me from the story itself. Kevin Bacon chews on the entire fake scenery of the Hollywood backlot as private detective John Labatt, who is hellbent on exposing Maxine's secrets. But this is not a character you'll ever see in real life. The recognizability of this character took me out of the story, as did Bacon's hammy performance. It's good and fun to watch Bacon revel in the sleaze, but it is an over-the-top role. The appearance of Giancarlo Esposito, who plays Maxine's agent, is another instance where the actor is good in the role, but the whole time I was distracted by his wig. Appearances of less A-list actors like Bobby Cannavale and Michelle Monaghan as cops feel more at home in the lo-fi atmosphere filmmaker West conveys, but their banter often is forced and too on the nose at times. I guess what I'm saying is that I feel that since this movie emulated the low-budget, Z-grade horror films of the late 70s and early 80s, it distracted me seeing these stars showing up in key roles. Still, that's a minor complaint as everyone played their part really well. It would have been interesting to see what some stars that were big in the 80s, like Eric Roberts or Don Johnson or Rebecca de Mornay, would have done with some of these roles. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised as both X and Pearl were excessively violent and gory, but the over-the-top gore in Maxine really did impress me. At this time in cinema, it's hard to do something new and different in gore that you haven't seen done a billion times before, but Maxine has some surprisingly unique murders in Carnage, most of which feels like West put a lot of thought into it to look like nothing that's been seen on film before. On top of that, the soundtrack, which occasionally plays the hits, but more often than not, relies on more deeper cuts of bands like Frankie Goes to Hollywood and the like, is a soundtrack I definitely will be seeking out. I guess it's time to end this review, and I do want to press the point that I did like Maxine a whole hell of a lot, despite my small issues with it. While Mia Goth dazzled us in Pearl, with Maxine, it's Ty West's time to shine as a filmmaker. If it weren't in the same trilogy as X and Pearl, it would be great on its own. But because West is forced to not only wrap up those two films' stories, but also put together elements introduced in Maxine, it feels like an impossible task. Still, this is the most solid trilogy I've seen in, well, maybe ever in horror. I have no idea where West is going after this film, and if the lovely Mia Goth will follow, though I sure hope so, because more goth is a good thing. But whatever Wes does next, I'm there, center of the theater, and ready for the director to dazzle me again. With a much lower budget, Cheryl tells the same kind of story Maxine does, except this one has a human skin mask. Got your interest? Check out this offbeat horror comedy called Cheryl. It was released on December 1st, 2023, 
and is available on demand and digital download from B&B Studios. It's directed and written by Justin Best. Cheryl, played by Anthea Neary Best, thought things were going okay. She had a boyfriend named Ted, played by Sean Sharma, and a job writing at a beauty website. But her boss berates her every day, and Ted is a serial killer who drags Cheryl along to help out, which she does wholeheartedly. When Ted breaks up with Cheryl after a home invasion gone wrong, Cheryl snaps a little. She comes up with an idea for her blog focusing on making the perfect face from perfect parts from perfect people. Not only does she write about this, but Cheryl also decides to seek out these perfect people and steal their perfect parts. And before you can say Lady Leatherface, she starts sewing the parts together to make a skin mask. Now, as luck would have it, Cheryl meets the perfect guy, played by Christopher Sedania, but wouldn't you know it, he turns out to be the detective investigating the murders Cheryl is committing. Wackiness ensues. Cheryl is an offbeat horror comedy heavy on the gore and sitcom hijinks. Yes, the silly coincidences and off-the-wall antics of the cast do make it feel like occasionally there should be a laugh track attached to it, and it should air in the half-hour slot after Mad About You, but hiding under the goofy surface is a real tragedy that I couldn't help but get invested in. The unbelievable moments, like how Cheryl is able to simply walk in and out of these murder scenes covered in blood, and how Cheryl seems to miss out numerous times on discovering what her new boyfriend does for a living, almost does the main themes a disservice. It helps that Althea Neary Best, who plays Cheryl, has an extremely strong sense of comic timing, so I was willing to overlook the sillier moments of this film simply for that. The main theme of Cheryl is society's obsession with beauty, specifically one very strange but somewhat typical young woman and the pressures that woman puts upon herself to be absolutely perfect. The irony of Cheryl is that Althea Neri Best is a stunningly beautiful woman, which only highlights how damaged she is by the lengths she goes to achieve perfection. Cheryl is a powerful tragedy, and thankfully, the film gets the goofy stuff out of the way in the first half, so it can focus on this very heartbreaking subject matter, as Cheryl continues to slide into complete insanity. Those looking for a quirky and safe little horror film are definitely going to get a shock from where this story goes. Me, I loved how dark Cheryl got. While I think it's tonally off from the beginning, it finally hits its stride in the latter half, and I was wrapped up in Cheryl's fate completely by the end. If Cheryl does anything, it proves that, though she is an unconventional leading actress, Althea Neary Best is a powerhouse performer. She's drop-dead gorgeous. Sure, I have to say, seeing her in the various revealing outfits she sports in the film was... very nice. But aside from all that, she delivers comedy and tragedy with ease. Cheryl tackles some ugly truths about insecurities many women suffer from in this oblivious day and age we find ourselves living in. These truths are going to fall on deaf ears for most, but if you have even a bit of insight, Cheryl is a movie that might actually make you look at yourself in a new and positive light. That's something I wasn't expecting from a movie where the lead actress is doused in blood in every other scene, but that's what I got from it. Cheryl is offbeat and over-the-top and body gory fun, but also packs a message coming from a very talented up-and-coming actress that overflows with wisdom you might learn a little from. Once again and always, feel free to agree, disagree, or how about you play along at home and give me your own picks for your favorite horror movies. It's October, so let's talk horror. Come back tomorrow for the next level in the Best in Horror Countdown, Be sure to hit all of those pertinent bells and whistles down below, and you'll never miss a post. Happy Halloween, folks. Please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Stuck inside your reality You're doomed Oh, you're doomed You're
Sai,